My name is James Brylowski. I'm with GeoNor Incorporated. We're here today to talk about the installation of a T200 Beep series precipitation gauge. So here we are, we're gonna go through the individual components of the precipitation gauge you'll use to set up your station. Of course, we have the sensors or the transducers. This is a 600 millimeter sensor. It comes in three different sizes, the 1000, the 1500, and we're actually in a prototype in a 3000 millimeter capacity at this time. We have the TH501 signal interface. This is what converts a signal to a zero to five volt or a negative 2.5 to a 2.5 volt signal for the data logger to read. Some of the hardware, the mounting bolt used to mount the pedestal to the frame, the washer used with the bolt. Here we have the strain relief connector, which will hold the cable firmly to the bottom of the gauge when you install it. We have the handy level, which is very important when installing a precipitation gauge. There are three components that you need to keep level as you do the installation. The pump, uh, just a siphon pump that when servicing the gauge can be used to empty the liquid that's been caught in the gauge. And of course we have the collection container. Uh, this one is a 600 millimeter capacity. The support dish where the bucket or the collection container will sit. And we have the frame of the precipitation gauge here with the transient arresters mounted on the rim. In this case, we have three transient arresters because we're gonna be doing a three sensor setup. So here we have the housing of the precipitation gauge. It comes with a World Meteorological Organization standard inlet, 200 square centimeters, a standard aluminum housing. And here we have our standard one meter pedestal. It comes with four mounts on the side for the altar screen. And it also has three tapped locations on top for these bolts which hold the gauge to it. Each sensor will come with a calibration sheet. These are specific for each individual sensor and they'll come with the important A, B, and F0 or F0 variables that need to be inserted into the polynomial to do the final calculation of the precipitation in centimeters. I'm gonna be going through the steps one by one to get a proper mounting of the precipitation gauge to make sure you get accurate data. The mounting of the precipitation gauge is very important. Without a solid foundation, you can get noise induced into the data. Typical foundation will be out of cement or bolts that are mounted in rock with epoxy. You'll use bolts, washers, anchor washers, and reaction bolts to hold the pedestal firmly in place. Make sure the top three tapped holes make a triangle pointing in the southern direction. This will ensure that at least one sensor is in the northernmost point and is less affected by any kind of diurnal movement from the sun heating the gauge. Next, you'll mount the gauge to the pedestal using the three M8 bolts. They'll be going through the bottom of the gauge into the tap holes in the top of the pedestal. Once the bolts are lightly screwed into the top of the pedestal, you can level the gauge using the leveling screws on the bottom of the gauge. These can be adjusted to make sure it is level in a north and south and east and west directions. Once the gauge is level, you can tighten the three M8 bolts. Next, we can wire the gauge before we put the sensors in place. To do this, you'll run the cable up through the bottom of the gauge through the strain relief connector, stripping back the cable cover as needed and connect the 22 AWG wires plus and minus to the transient arresters on the rim. Make a note of the colors going to each transient arrestor as this will be important knowing which sensor is giving you which data. Make sure that the wires are not coming in contact with a bucket or the support dish as this may have an effect on your readings. Sensor number one in the northernmost point will be wired to this transient arrestor. Sensor number two here will be wired to this transient arrestor. Sensor number three here will be wired to this transient arrestor. And five and three are the output signals. Next, we're gonna install the sensors, also known as the transducers. Take note of each sensor and its location. Generally, we start with the lowest number in the northernmost point and work in a clockwise direction. Here's the sensor, we need to take off the neural nut. When installing the sensor, it's important that the wire from the top of the sensor come up through the hole in the rim of the gauge on the same side that the wire is located on. This will have a minimal effect on any kind of a heating or cooling of the cable, and will also make sure that there is less of an effect on the frequency from the sensor. At this point, you're ready to connect the sensor to the transient arrestor on the rim of the gauge. These tabs are included. They're adhesive tabs, and they can be used to make sure the wires do not come in contact with the bucket.
Now you're ready to connect the support dish to the sensors themselves. You can check the level of the support dish as it's hanging from the sensors. Make any adjustments necessary by turning the black neural nuts on top of the sensors. At this point, place the bucket or collection container in the support dish. On the rim of the bucket, there is a black mark. The black mark corresponds to a black mark location right near one of the sensors. The only reason for this is for continuity when you do service the gauge to make sure that it's lined up in the same position. If you haven't already done so, you'll need to remove the set screw on the transducer. The set screw is only there to keep the sensor from being damaged during transportation or servicing. This is located on the side of the sensor. At this point, you're ready to add the antifreeze and the oil. Antifreeze will only be necessary, of course, if you're gonna be in temperatures where you're gonna get below freezing. The oil is there to keep the evaporation from the precipitation and the antifreeze. You'll need about 0.4 liters of oil to prevent evaporation. The amount of antifreeze you add is all dependent on the temperatures you expect. You're now ready to measure precipitation. Before placing the cover on the gauge, connect the data logger to the sensors and listen to make sure they're humming and giving you good data. We're gonna be using the CR1000 from Campbell Scientific. We're gonna be using the pulse counting to measure the frequency. And we're also gonna power the sensors from a 12 volt port on this logger. The sensors are gonna be powered from the Campbell Scientific data logger, the 12 volt port, which we have connected here to C. And we just have these linked together to supply power to all three sensors. The power to our C1000 is gonna come from this converter outputting 12 volts DC. So now we have sensor number one, red and black, sensor number two, white and black, and sensor number three, green and black, connected to the proper ports on the signal interfaces. As long as the sensors are humming and you're getting good data, you can place the cover on the gauge. So now that we have our precipitation gauge all installed, uh, we're recording data and uh, it's ready to be left alone in the field. So this has been a demonstration of how to set up a three wire, 600 millimeter precipitation gauge, also known as a T200BM3. This is James Barlowski with Geonor. Thank you for watching.